Today, the verse I quote often when I preach, and I'm on the streets, Romans 6.23. And you got to understand, Romans 6.23 is a great verse to use when dealing with lost people. But that's spiritualizing. Because Romans 6.23 is darkly written in context to the Christian. Think about that. I know we use it for, for, for the lost, but it's written to the Christian. It's one of those verses we can spiritualize and do use. I mean, scripture can be applied doctrinally. It can apply spiritual. And it can apply historic. And it says, for the wages of sin is death. And that's what I want to focus on. The rest of the verses, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But I want to focus on the wages of sin is death. Now, I've been a widower twice. I hold in my files two death certificates. Of two of my wives. Both of the death certificates state a cancer. My last wife was, was lung cancer. From smoking. My first wife was, uh, was a breast cancer. That went to the stomach. Then went to the brain. And they got legal mumble jumble. My dad just passed away. I have a brother that died a couple years ago. I have a brother who died at birth, living only hours. My grandparents have passed on. And I've got saved family that has passed on, that will pass on, that are going to go to glory. They're with, the Bible says to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. And I've got family who have died and will die, and they'll wake up in hell. But I'm not talking about a heaven or hell. I'm talking about the wages of sin is death, and you look at it like this. You go to work for the week, whether you put one hour in or you put 80 hours in or 100 hours. At the end of the week or at the end of the month, whenever your employer says, hey, this is when you get your paycheck. And when you open up your paycheck or you check online your, your stuff, you want every hour and every minute that you clocked in or however you signed into your employer. In other words, you want your employer to pay you for every second you worked. And who wouldn't? I had a job one time that uh, we came to the paycheck, it came up short. Well, we don't have enough funds. Well, I'm not coming back Monday. And you better pay me or I'll take you to the unemployment. I had a job like that. But we also have the wages of sin is death. Sin causes death. Now, like I said, I had a brother that lived hours. He didn't even live a day. He was, well, what sin did he what did he do? The wages of sin is death. He didn't do any sin. He was born into sin. And when you can trace my mom and my dad and my grandparents and their grandparents and their grandparents, and you can trace it all the way back to Adam and Eve taking of the fruit that God said, the day that y'all shall eat, Thou shalt surely die. Genesis chapter 5. Now surely die is you died spiritually. Genesis 5, you died physically. And the very chapter 4, the next chapter, you have a murder. Now let me show you six ways of dying that I wrote down. You can die of natural. You can die in an accident. You can die of homicide. That's an accident that was accidental. 
You can die by suicide. You can die by undetermined death. And you can die by murder. But that is not the cause of death. I said, both my wife died and I got an official, official document from the state of Connecticut and the state of Florida. The determined death of, of this, your spouse, is cancer. No. The official documents of all 50 states and all countries in the world are wrong. You, misrepresent, you misrepresented the cause of death. The cause of death, number one, and that's one of well, how did they die? Sin. They were born of Adam and they were born of Eve. They were born with the Adam nature to sin. What about all the babies that are killed? Sin. Well, that child was too young to do anything. You were born into sin. Psychiatrists have got it semi right. You know, blame your mother, blame your father. Yeah, we can blame Mother Adam and fa uh, Mother Eve and Father Adam. It's just a consequence. Listen, there are children who are born with transmitted disease, sexual transmitted diseases, because their parents sin. There are children born today that they are addicted to serious and any drugs and alcohol and tobacco because what the parents did. And you look at that child, yeah, that poor baby, that poor child that has been addicted to, to a substance abuse. And it is a poor child, but it's the result of the parents. And sin is the result of our parents going back to Adam and going back to Eve when God warned them the penalty of eating that fruit is death. I dealt with a guy one time, only one guy so far in my life. He never sinned. And we went at it. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, the Bible said. Oh, no, 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 not me. I mean, the guy told me right out, right. He did not sin. He never sinned. And that I was a sinner for preaching sin. And he wasn't holding this. And just in his mindset, he never sinned. And, but he wasn't Jesus Christ, but he never sinned. I was a sinner for preaching, okay? So he never sinned. And I got nowhere with that man. I told that man, I said, listen, and I gave him one of my business cards. Right? I said, you have your family contact me the day you die. And you you have your family tell me where they bury your body or entomb your body or if you're cremated. Because at the time, whatever they do with your body, when you die, and he said he was going to die, <laughs> I said, I'm going to stand over your grave. I'm going to stand over your urine. I'm going to stand in front of your, your entomb. Wherever, whatever happens to your dead body, I'm going to say, you're a sinner. You say, is Stiley Hayward holier than thou? Is Stiley Hayward perfect? Not if the Lord tarries and... I die, my family buries me. My brother Robert died within an hour. I can stand over his grave and say, sin did it. Now you may not have sinned, brother, but sin is why you're dead. And he had, my parents told me whatever the Kennedy's baby had, Blue baby, something like that. That was his disease. I, I don't. I never looked it up. Now, my other brother who died years ago, I could stand over his. Oh, he had. He was cremated. I could stand over and say, "You sinned. You actually sinned. You've taken something that's not yours. You have lied about something. You coveted. The wages of sin for you is you died." 
My other brother, the causes of sin, though he never sinned, but we are born in the nature of Adam. Now, if the Lord tarries, you can stand over my grave and you can say, Brother Stiley, you sinned. You've taken things that you have not asked for. You have lied. You have looked upon women that you shouldn't have. You have coveted. You had thoughts of murder. You've had anger. You have hatred. You had it all. You, you did not always put God first. Now, if Stiley Hayward is hit by a great Greyhound bus, and boom, he's splattered on the road. All right. I don't know what they would put on the death certificate, but number one spot, because there's the, the state of Florida spot, I think there's four spots for causes of death. I think there were, if I remember. Number one spot, Romans 6 23. The wages of sin is death, and then hit by a Greyhound bus. Cancer. Suffocated. Malnutrition. Starvation. Suicide. Natural causes. We don't know why. Homicide. Listen, even abortion itself, the wages of sin is death. Those fetuses, those babies didn't do nothing. And the logical sin of those of abortion would be to think that a woman has adulterized, fornicated with a man she should not have. That's a sin. And it's sad that babies, fetuses, have passed off, but the wages of sin of the fetus, of the baby in the womb that was killed because of apparent sin. Now, maybe some cases of abortion, I mean, they're legitimate, married and all that. They just don't want children. And a pregnancy happens. That may happen too. But the underlying cause of abortion is because the sin of the mother. That fetus never sinned. But that fetus was conceived in sin. So the next time you get angry with God because of a death, and many people get angry with a death at God, and it's not even related to their family. Oh, all, all those kids were killed at the, at the school shooting. All those kids were killed at this thing. And the kids were killed on the, on the school bus accident. Yes, it's tragic. Please do not, under, do not underestimate me in the tragedy of death of any age. But don't blame God. When God gave the commandment to Adam and gave the warning that if Genesis 3, if Eve never ate of that fruit, if Adam never ate of that fruit, and if they obeyed the word of God, there would be no death today, no cemeteries, no funerals. Now, when, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you are saved, and you absent from the body and present with the Lord at death, or you're raptured, when we get to glory, there is no more death. There is no more sting of death. There's no more sin. God eliminates sin in New Jerusalem. Then, as a result of the elimination of all sin, and iniquity, there is no wages of sin, which is death, because sin has been eliminated. Now, sin has come to a payment. Sin has come to be on this planet Earth amongst humans and animals because man disobeyed the word of God. And you get somebody who has matured. Getting away from the little infants and abortion, get and get to get to a, a, a three, four, five to a hundred and ten year old person. 
And I can sit you down yourself. I can sit you down with your parents. I can sit you down with your children. I can sit you down with your spouse and your grandparents. And we can go through the basic Ten Commandments. And I will find that you are a sinner. Somewhere in the Ten Commandments, you violated at least one commandment. And the, the scriptures say, if, if we if we offend in one commandment, we offend in all. And I guarantee we cannot get by the first commandment. The first commandment is God first. All the time, every time. We we failed that one. Never mind two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If the Lord tarries, myself is going to die because I'm a sinner. You say, well, Stanley, you confess your sins and God is faithful and just to forgive your sins and he cleanse you. Amen. But <laughs> did you not work? Let's say you worked a 40 hour week. All right. And at, at 5.01, Friday afternoon, at 5.01, you, you work at 5. 5.01, you died. Is your paycheck, okay, that's it, company keeps it. No, the paycheck goes to your spouse or, or somebody who you recognize to be your next of kin. Now, my sins are forgiven. Okay? Glory to God, I am forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ. I will not see my sins at the judgment seat of Christ. All right? Let's say... At one point in my time, let's let's take let's take a man, and what he's done is he's he's gone out and he's got drunk or stoned, and he's just he's out of it, okay, drunk or stoned or both, and let's say and they're both sins, and let's say in that drunken stupor that uh, being intoxicated and and high, let's say for some reason. His arm gets chopped off. Okay. Wherever. The hand. The arm. The, what, the whole thing. Whatever it is. He, he loses his arm. He sinned. And as a result of the sin. He lost his arm. And he gets saved. And he believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. Or he was a Christian and he repented. He wasn't saved, he got saved, or he was saved and he repented for his sin and he and God and he confessed his sin. He got right to the Lord through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's cleansed, he's forgiven. What you gonna wait for the arm to pop back? It ain't gonna pop back. And there may be a Christian out there. I sinned with, an, with, with, with somebody of the opposite sex. Okay? I have had adulterous or fornication relations with somebody I should not have had. But, you know, I got saved or I, I confessed it. I got it right. And one day you may hear, yes, hi, Daddy. Hi, Mama. Well, Mama, you, you would know. Okay, Daddy. The wages of sin is death. God may forgive us, and he does. And God may cleanse us, he will. But sin will call common. It's called evil. Now, evil can be a sin, but let's look at evil as far as the fact is, you sin, evil is the consequence of sin. God will forgive you. God will cleanse you, and God may show you mercy and grace that you don't sow it, you don't sow it as much, and then the reaping. 
Man, when you plant seeds, you sow seeds. There's a crop coming. And when we look at the wages of sin is death, we're looking at sowing and reaping. I sowed the sins and the, uh, you know, the, my wild oats. Well, friend, uh, there's some kind of crop coming. Now, if God may be merciful, God may be gracious. And if the Lord tarries, at least the reaping of sin is you're going to die. Now, one other place, First John. And I read this to this guy and still. First John 1A. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. And I understand that there are people out there who believe, there's religions out there that believe, you know, we don't sin. Yes, you do, but, you know, you classify sin. For somebody who does not believe they've sinned and they believe they have never sinned or not a sinner. The day that a death certificate is signed in, in their name and certified, you're a sinner. <clears throat> and I petition the governments of the world. <coughs> I petition each of the 50 states. And we're a Christian nation, aren't we? That every death certificate be printed, number one cause of death, the wages of sin is death. Saved or lost. Then, leukemia, bled to death, job site accident, and then the fill in the blank, cancer. But the number one leading cause of death is sin. And you don't have to sin a fetus, embryo, newborn baby, a infant, stillborn. You don't have to physically sin. We're born in the nature of sin. For all have sinned and comes as short of come short of the glory of God. There's only one sinless person that showed up on this planet without sin. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ, is, it was born what we call the virgin birth. Mary conceived by God, not by Joseph or any man. Mary had no marriage bed, no adultery, no fornication relationship. It was a miraculous uh, 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 it was she became impregnant miraculously by the Holy Spirit, not by a human man. So there's one issue with that. When a man's sperm comes together with a female's egg, I mean, if you're born artificial inseminated, if you're born a test tube baby, if a man's sperm and a woman's egg and lord forbid you get animal sperm i mean all the scientific junk they're doing that but if a, if a sperm of a male let's say it like that because animals die if the sperm of a man because there was no sperm for for mary in the virgin birth of jesus there was no sperm at all the seed of man of adam by nature we are born into sin and then once we're born we, we we sin so one of the causes of death is natural causes what is natural causes adam my great 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 grandfather was adam and eve 
And Jesus Christ is sinless because the virgin birth. Jesus Christ did not come of the seed of Adam. He came of the seed of God. That's why if you don't, you don't believe the virgin birth, you can't be saved. And that's put forth in Isaiah 7, 14. 